If water is the elixir of life, and waves are considered the most powerful energy source, then it would be safe to say that the Hawaiian Islands are one of the most powerful places on the planet. The following is Explorer's tribute to the lifeguard, the modern-day sheriffs of the Wild West, guardians of the sea. To understand the history of lifeguarding, one must start with the legendary Duke Kahanamoku, the father of all surfing. Duke, a royal descendant of King Kamehameha, symbolizes what all lifeguards share in common. They are the ultimate watermen. Well, he won his preliminary and then went on to win the final and shattered the world's record, establishing a new Olympic and new world's record. And then the King of Sweden, King Gustav, crowned him with the laurel wreath entitled to the victor of the Olympics. At 22, Duke won his first gold medal and shattered the world record in the 100-meter freestyle. He would go on to represent the United States for the next 20 years and win the hearts of people all over the world with his aloha spirit. One day, June 14th, 1925, you're surfing at Newport Beach, California, when a fishing boat, the Thelma, capsizes offshore under the battering of 25-foot waves. But let's go back to June 14, 1925, the day the Thelma capsized. Here are three of the men you actually saved that fateful day and whom you haven't seen since. From Riverside, California, here is Fred Hawk. And Harry Olin and Edward Steed from Colton, California. Mr. Steed, you must have thought it was all over when those waves came crashing down on you, sir. Duke, hadn't have saved me, I'd still be there. In 1925, Duke performed the most courageous act of heroism in its time. Duke's selfless courage also marked a milestone in the history of lifeguarding, as was the first time a surfboard was used as an instrument of rescue. In 1968, Duke, Hawaii's most beloved ambassador of aloha, passes on. But his spirit and selfless courage would be absorbed by another legendary Hawaiian, Eddie Aikau, famed lifeguard of Waimea Bay. Surfing is a highly territorial sport, and people don't always get along. But Eddie, always the gentle soul, knew how to bring people together. His legend grew, and as both surfer and guardian of the sea, not one single life was lost during Eddie's watch at Waimea Bay. Eddie grew restless and needed a new challenge, one that would promote all Hawaiian ancestry. In 1978, Eddie joined the crew of the Hokulea, a traditional sailing canoe, to honor the 2,500-mile voyage that Polynesians made across the Pacific. But tragedy would strike out at sea. 12 miles off the shore of Molokai, the Hokulea took on too much water and capsized in gale force conditions. As the crew clung to the hull throughout the night, Eddie, the ultimate lifeguard, could no longer stand to see his crew suffer. In an act of unheralded heroism, he set out paddling to the shores of Lanai to save his fellow crewmen. Hours later, a plane spotted the Hokulea and the crew was rescued. Eddie was never seen again. But his spirit lives on, as does his bravery and courage with the next generation of lifeguards.
uh, on Northwest Swell came up overnight. It's actually bigger. Waimea Bay, right over on this side. You can't really, you can just barely see the waves coming into the bay there. I see the tower's already open and things are, things are already well underway here, so. Equipment. Rick Williams is a chief lifeguard of Pipeline Beach, the most deadly wave in the world. His command post is Tower 26. You've got to be familiar with the environment. You've got to know the ocean. You've got to know the area where you're at. You've got to have good equipment, and you've got to be physically conditioned. And you've got to be a little crazy, too. And on this day, Pipeline awoke from its winter slumber. Pipe was breaking, and it was going to be a busy day at the office. How do you rescue someone when they get pummeled in a big wave? How is it even possible? How do you get out there, and how do you even know where they are? Um, it's, you know, it's different every time. There's, in the course of my career, you know, I figured that I probably rescued, on the average, about 20 people a year or 25 people a year. And there's times 25 years, and that's over 500 people. And, and I figured that half, maybe half of those people might have washed in or gotten pushed in or made it in somehow on their own, but the other half of them would have died. Where Rick patrols the beach, Terry Ahui, Rick's mentor, pioneered the art of jet ski rescue, a crucial tool in saving lives. You know, one observation I made about the lifeguard here in the North Shore is it kind of reminds me of the the Wild West in terms of like the sheriff. I mean, I feel like because this is such a water culture, the lifeguard really is a figure that's respected here. They're like, they're like God on days like today. You know, they're the guys that go around and try to warn people and try to make sure they're safe. First day of work, they sent me out there to work at Wyoming Bay with ADI Cow, you know? And I walked up there like, wow, this is my hero, you know? And I'm like, big, you know, Hawaiian hero, so got to work with him for a little while, and uh, he taught me a lot. It just comes natural. I mean, we've been doing it for so long, so, you know, and the part is, too, is, is me being the old dog on the thing is me trying to pass my knowledge on to the younger generation, you know, because when I pass away, I want to make sure they get all this knowledge from me. I don't want to take it with me. I want to give it to them. And then I want them to pass it on to their younger generation when it starts coming up, you know? So that's what I try to do. I try to, like, teach all the, all the knowledge and stuff I get all, from all the mistakes I did out there in the water, all the wipeouts I took, all, you know, all the near drownings that I had. I pass it on. I teach it to the younger guys, you know? These guardians of the sea stand for values we can all learn from. They are selfless, egoless, and dedicated to improving the human condition every single day of their lives. Explore salutes you, and thank you, Hawaii, for opening your heart to us. Aloha. Gonna blow, so I'm gonna go down on the road.
road again Starting where the mountains left me I end up where I began Where I will go the wind only knows Good times around the bend Get in my car, going to far, man 